modern electronic age, rapid technical advances require the constant revision of the weapons of offence and defence. In no field of military activity does this apply more than in the field of electronics. At the Army School of Signals, located at Balcom, Victoria, is based a staff of skilled instructors. They are responsible for a constant flow of well-trained men equipped with the most up-to-date knowledge of communications methods as they apply to a modern army. Although printed telegraphy has reduced the requirement for Morse operating, certain types of field communications still require a knowledge of Morse. Thus the Army trains its signalmen in both Morse and keyboard operating. In the keyboard operator's training room, a basic training class learns to touch type on the keyboard of the teletype machine, which is capable of page printing at a rate of 60 words per minute. Women's Royal Australian Army Corps students are also trained along with male students as teletype operators. At this stage, they are able to type at about 25 words per minute. At the school, a complete Corps Headquarters Signals Office on active service is simulated. A message brought by dispatch rider for transmission may be sent by line, telegraph or wireless. Wireless and line routing diagrams give the routing clerk an immediate picture of the channels available to him and assist him also to decide whether he should have the message converted into cipher for security. Line telegraph is usually more secure than wireless, which can be intercepted by the enemy. The conditions in this simulated field signal office give signal clerks, signal operators and line and wireless operators an opportunity to experience at first hand and in a practical manner the conditions they'll work under in the field. A class marches to the electronic trainer room. The 3V electronic trainer provides a complete course of study in radio receivers and transmitters and includes the principles of radar and TV. It can produce 108 separate exercises in design, testing and the maintenance of circuitry. The instructor builds up on a master panel the desired circuit and the students follow stage by stage on their own racks. After testing their built-up equipment, the students are then confronted with a series of deliberate faults and changes in electrical characteristics, which they must detect, analyze, and correct. The complete range of normal test equipment is used during these experiments. Practical experience follows theoretical training. This equipment demonstrates the radiation pattern of different types of transmitting aerials and quickly reveals the effectiveness of an aerial for a specific purpose. The signal response can be viewed upon a cathode ray screen and this, combined with accurately measured meter readings and the sound of the incoming signal, provides for the students a complete picture of the behavior of the invisible radio frequency waves. The students study a rhombic aerial, erected to demonstrate that this type of aerial is directional along its longest axis. It's used for long distance communications on an international basis. Wave meters reveal visually the pattern of the radiation from this type of transmitting aerial. The demonstration is carried out using a working scale model which has been constructed by the class from their own calculations. The Army uses some 20 types of automatic telegraphy equipment 
for the transmission and reception of teletype traffic. Army telegraph mechanics adjust and maintain the electrical and mechanical action of all these automatic telegraph machines. This machine has 2,800 separate parts. Whenever very accurate control of a transmitter's frequency is required, small wafers of quartz cut from natural quartz crystals are used. Because of the thousands of frequencies an army uses in the field, extreme accuracy is needed to prevent interference between transmitters. At the signal school, army crystal experts produce most of the quartz crystals used by the army. They're tested for accuracy in a machine which is checked twice daily against the National Bureau of Standards in Washington. Officers of the Royal Australian Corps of Signals and other arms attend the school on courses which are designed to instruct them in basic and advanced communication systems and techniques. The demonstration models are, in this project, set up for a system of communication between the Army, Navy and Air Force. This plan would enable the Army to obtain immediate airstrikes by direct communication with airfield and aircraft carriers and the aircraft in flight. The demonstration models provide a practical method of presenting an overall picture of such a complex combined surfaces operation. In the field, the Corps of Signals uses a wide range of specialized equipment all designed to permit the rapid linking of the elements of a field force by line and by radio. A new type of lightweight plastic-covered field cable can be laid by one man who maintains telephone contact while on the move. The half-mile dispenser coil weighs 26 pounds and the cable can be laid in all types of country and through rivers. Up to 11 pairs of this cable can be laid from a vehicle. The cables can be laid at the maximum speed of which the vehicle is capable. This recently designed cable has been laid successfully from light aircraft and it can also be rocket launched. The cables are secured initially to prevent possible damage by vehicles and if necessary may later be supported as a more permanent installation. The number 62 man-pack wireless set is a very efficient transmitter receiver equipment. It can be used while on the move or stationary. It's used for battalion and regimental communications and on long-range patrols. The set and harness weighs 32 pounds and the battery and carrier 35 pounds. The A510 set, which weighs 15 pounds, is packed into the pouches of the normal infantry equipment. Here it's being used on patrol to pass back information about an enemy's dispositions. The CPRC-26 set is a Canadian designed trans-receiver with plug-in circuitry which simplifies field maintenance. Here the set is used to communicate with mortar crews in order to inform them about their targets and the accuracy of their firing. The ANPRC-10 set is of American design. It's being used here by a company commander to report to battalion headquarters. It's a general purpose man pack set and is used also by artillery and armor. It weighs 25 pounds. The number 62 set may be used from a jeep to maintain communications with battalion headquarters. The call of signals is constantly training its men so that they will be ready instantly for action at any time to help the civil authorities during periods of national disaster which may involve flood, bushfires and grasshopper plagues. The Army Tape Relay Station is located near Melbourne. From this station, the Army can receive and transmit messages to any part of the world and to any command within Australia. Incoming tapes are checked for accuracy before being fed into the transmitter distributor head, which are linked by radio with the Army's transmitting centre. The operators, many of whom are members of the Women's Royal Australian Army Corps, Check the tape for corruptions before registration.
The operator here is processing a tape to go to four addressees. This requires typing additional handling instructions in the preamble of each tape. An accurate and readily accessible record is kept of all outward transmissions. And this is achieved by a continuous tape monitoring system which employs a re-perforator on each outgoing tape channel. The system control officer and his channel mechanic supervise incoming channels from the Army receiving station and outgoing channels to the Army transmitting station. Line mechanics are constantly on duty at the relay station to correct any equipment faults which might develop. The system control officer is in direct contact with the transmitting and receiving station. The Army receiving station is located near Melbourne. Here, the Army maintains equipment which can receive teletype and telephony signals from transmitting stations located anywhere in the world. Here, Audio tones from receivers are converted into electrical impulses which will operate a teletype machine. These signals pass by radio to the tape relay station. Army radio mechanics maintain this elaborate equipment. They locate faults, carry out repairs and install new equipment. The Army transmitting station is also located near Melbourne. Army linemen are responsible for the erection and maintenance of the elaborate aerial systems which can radiate signals to any point on the globe. Here the control console is linked by microphone and loudspeaker with the tape relay station. The patch panel provides the facility to link together equipments and lines for various purposes. A bank of powerful transmitters sends signals to many parts of the world. The foreman of signals, by changing transmitter inductances, can tune each transmitter to radiate on different frequencies for particular requirements. Transmitter frequencies may need to be changed from time to time as ionospheric conditions deteriorate between transmitter and receiver. A maximum of 20 minutes is permitted the technician to complete this operation. Should the power supply which is taken from the state grid system fail, auxiliary generating plant can be brought into operation in a matter of seconds. This equipment is operated and maintained by members of the Royal Australian Engineers attached to the signal corps. The Army has almost completed the installation of one of the most modern transmitting stations in the world. New type transmitters delivering 30 kilowatts of power into the aerial for simultaneous transmission of speech and telegraph will provide our army with the means to maintain international links with our allies in peace or in war. Inductances are changed automatically in these transmitters. The new auxiliary powerhouse contains generating equipment that can produce sufficient power to supply a large sized tower. The Royal Australian Corps of Signals is ensuring that, as it is called upon to provide communications in peace and in war, it will maintain, as always, the tradition of the Corps. The Corps motto, Certo Cito, or Swift and Sure, is foremost in the minds of all its members.